Hello and welcome to week seven in the introduction to sociology. It's uh, Tuesday afternoon and we've already met today, so you have a little bit of an uh, idea about what we're covering this week. Uh, something I didn't mention in class today, however, was that this is midterm week. So you're getting your midterm grades are going to be coming out on this Friday. That's when we're due. That's when the faculty will put them in. I'm not sure when they're going to get to you. Here is my deal about midterm grades. Um, First and foremost, these are simply an opportunity for faculty to communicate to you that you're approaching the point of no return if you have not been performing well in the class. So this is it's not a death knell. These grades disappear after a while. They, they don't stay anywhere. They're not kept on record. Well, they are, but they don't reflect anything. Um, in future transcripts or anything like that. This is simply a method that we have, a point in the semester where we say, hey, if things aren't working, you gotta make some decisions either about the class or about your particular efforts in the class. Um, to do that in a class like mine when there's very heavily weighted final assignments that haven't even risen out of the water yet, um, I've always struggled with giving uh, you know, a calculated final grade. So with a little bit of research, I found out that attendance is the, is the best predictor. I can just report, I'm going to report your attendance grade as your midterm grade. M attendance predicts final grades. There's, there's, a, there's a correlation there, a pretty high correlation. So in an effort to give you a sense of what you're doing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you a grade on your attendance. Um, if you get an attendance warning in my class or any other class, you should be prepared to reach out to your instructor. And I would, I would ask you, particularly in my situation, but it generalizes to everybody else, that you go into the class and find out what you're missing. If you go, if you contact an instructor and you're like, I got a bad grade, what am I supposed to do? And it's like, well, there's the problem. You don't know what to do. So you need to go into the course and find out what you're missing develop a plan, work that with your instructor. This is the time to reach out. Do not be intimidated by this. Do not feel shamed by this. Trust me, we do this all the time. And, and maybe, maybe we can come up with a plan to help you get back on your feet, or maybe it's a time to cut your losses and focus on your other classes because too much has come on, took on a little too much or stuff. This is the opportunity to have that discussion with your instructor. Now, that said, today we talked about inequality in the U.S. And in the next class, we're going to be talking about inequality in the globe or entire Earth. So I'll be introducing you to a concept called the Gini coefficient, which is a relatively complex measure of the distribution of gross national product across the members of a country. It is in many ways not the most accurate way to measure global inequality. It's a measure. It is, it, as with all statistics, there's limitations to what we can say about it. Nonetheless, it is a very, very uh, famous measure out there. I'll be introducing you to that so that we can rate countries in terms of how well wealth is distributed across different people. Now, we had a discussion today that Distrib unequal distributions of wealth is not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, over the course of development, we would actually expect to see that. You know, when, when, um, you know, when new technology comes along and, uh, you know, when Mr. Shoemaker got his, uh, his first machine, uh, one of the first effects of that machine was an increase in inequality. He became much richer than the other people. There was a jump in the inequality. But then as other people became mechanized and moved into industry, it started to become less unequal again. So jumps in inequity, sort of a function of technological development. So we want to keep that in mind when we're, when we're looking at the Gini coefficient and looking at places, there might be places with very, very high inequity because they're just beginning the industrialization process. There's lots of reasons why there might be this unequal spread of wealth. So we're going to be spending some time on that. And that's it. There's nothing for Chapter 9. So we're kind of looking at socioeconomic 
uh, inequality. And in the global one, there's going to be some, uh, I'm going to be talking about some, some of the other, other ways in which places are unequal. Some of the maybe even more important ways in terms of education, health care, uh, gender disparities, fairness between the genders, uh, freedoms, you know, freedom of the press, freedom of media and stuff like that. These important qualities that are also measures of inequality, uh, both domestically and globally. So I'll be getting a little bit into that on Thursday. So um, here we're, uh, we have this week and then we're on break next week. So let's have a nice strong ending. Today's class, by the way, I really, really, I walked away from that. I was on a cloud. It was really fun. Love the dynamic. Let's keep that up. That's really energizing for me. I hope it was energizing for you. Nice dialogue going on in class. I really appreciate that. So I will see you folks on Thursday and have a great week.